Hey guys, it's Monday. Welcome to a new week. So this week we are starting, we're still in the God's Love series, and we are starting into the New Testament. So this week we're going to be in Matthew. Um, I'm really excited. Now just a fair warning, my week is going to get a little crazy, because my sister is moving this week, so... I may not be able to post every day. We will see. So let's start with a little bit of background on the book of Matthew. So this book was written by Jesus' disciple Matthew, who was a tax collector before Jesus called him to follow him. Matthew wrote this book to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, the eternal king. Now, I love Matthew's story. So I try not to go off on too much of a tangent, but Matthew was a tax collector, and tax collectors were known for stealing from the people, like charging them too much, and lining their own pockets, and Matthew was doing this, and he had a big house, and he had cheated a bunch of people, but then Jesus called him to be his disciple. He said, I'm going to have dinner with you. And after that, Matthew completely changed. He gave back everything that he had taken, like double. Like he said, oh, I gave, I, t I cheated you out of this much, I'll give you double what I cheated you. And basically he gave away everything. That's amazing to me. Because God can take someone who in society is seen as an outcast or someone that is hated, and change them into this person that is lo beloved by everybody around them and just gives them a complete 180 degree change in their life. And I know personally that's happened to me. I used to be completely different than what I am today. It's amazing how God can work in our lives. Now, Matthew wrote this book specifically to the Jews but this is also for all of us. At the time, it was for the Jews. During our time, it's for everybody, because we are all we have all been adopted into God's family, into Jesus' family, and that is who He's talking to here. He's trying to prove to them that Jesus is the Messiah. And if you're a Christian, you we already know that He's the Messiah. But sometimes we have to be convinced, and, and other people have to be convinced as well. So today we're going to be looking at Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Now this is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And people are gathering, and they want to see Jesus and hear him speak. But before he speaks to them, he pulls his disciples aside. And he tells them these things. Let's read it and then we will break it down a little bit. So, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, it's a little weird to say rejoice when you're being persecuted. 
but God says to rejoice. And we'll break that down in a minute. But let's go back and break down verses 1 and 2. So, it's just saying like, enormous crowds were following Jesus. He was a talk of the town. And everyone wanted to see him. The disciples who were the closest associates of this popular man were certainly tempted to feel important and proud and possessive. Being with Jesus gave them not only prestige, but also opportunity to receive money and power. The crowds were gathering once again, but before speaking to them, Jesus pulled his disciples aside and warned them about the temptations they would face as his associates. Don't expect fame and fortune, Jesus was saying, but mourning, hunger, and persecution. Nevertheless, Jesus assured his disciples they would be rewarded, but perhaps not in this life. There may be times when following Jesus will bring us great popularity. If we don't live by Jesus' words in this sermon, we will find ourselves using God's message only to promote our personal interests. Now God was warning his disciples or Jesus was warning his disciples. And obviously as humans we can be like, oh, we're with this important person, like we're important too, and we can have we have all this opportunity now. Jesus was like, no. Don't look at that. That stuff means nothing in heaven. You can't take money with you. You can't take any material object with you to heaven. What matters is that you do this work with me, that you spread God's word with me. I love you, so I'm warning you about what can happen, is what he's saying. He's saying, I love you so much, and I want you to learn this stuff, so I am warning you, life is not going to be a piece of pie. It's not going to be a piece of cake. And I don't want you to be with me for the power and prestige that it could get you. Because that means nothing in my kingdom. It means nothing. He says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Not blessed are the boisterous or the powerful, the meek, the shy person. The one who believes quietly will inherit the earth. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. If you're merciful, you'll be shown mercy. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We're all children of God, but he doesn't want you to be combative or confrontive. He wants you to be a peacemaker. He wants you to be a light for him. Now let's look at 11 and 12. So I'm going to read 11 and 12 again, and then we're going to break it down. So blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who are before you. So Jesus said to rejoice when we're persecuted. Persecution can be good because it takes our eyes off of earthly rewards. It strips away superficial belief. It strengthens the faith of those who endure. And our attitude through it serves as an example to others who follow. We can be comforted to know that God's greatest prophets were persecuted. For example, Elijah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel. I mean, Daniel was thrown into a lion's den. The fact that we are being persecuted proves that we have been faithful. Faithless people would be unnoticed. In the future, God will reward the faithful by receiving them into his eternal kingdom, where there is no more persecution. 
Now a lot of people think that when you accept Christ, everything's going to be easy, life's not going to be hard anymore. Uh-uh. Jesus said, you will be persecuted because of me, and that's good. If you're not persecuted because of me, then you're not living by faith. Persecution is hard. And in America, it's a little bit different than around the world, than around than in the rest of this world. But we still are persecuted here. But God told us that we would be. But he says rejoice and be glad because your reward is going to be in heaven. And it's going to be amazing. Stuff on this earth doesn't matter. It's here today, gone tomorrow. Heaven is eternal. So remember, the next time that something is happening, that something bad is happening, God is right there in the middle of it and He's saying, I love you, my child. I love you, so rejoice. Have joy in this time because your reward will be in heaven. And that is way better than anything that you could get on this earth. So rejoice in me. That's what he's saying. He's saying rejoice in me. Because I am with you. And I love you. It's just amazing to me how he can take one person and use them to reach hundreds, if not thousands. He can take one broken person and put them back together. Remember, He loves you, and He wants you to rejoice in the midst of your pit. Rejoice in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your sorrow, in the midst of your pain. Rejoice in Him because He is there, and He will get you out of it. But He wants you to learn something first. I'll see you guys tomorrow.